All right. So we got uh, Rich and Jerry back with you. Rich is uh, still on his vacation, going to be out there for a little bit, but he uh, took some time out of his day to, to join us on the channel. Uh, we're going to talk through a little bit of uh, what he's doing today. Uh, I did the review, my weekly review video yesterday on my watch list. We're just going to touch in there uh, and talk about a little bit of that, uh, and then we'll, we'll close it out at the end. But uh, without further ado, Rich, over to you. All right, so let me uh, get this off here. All right, so uh, since I'm overseas, that uh, you know the time zones are all messed up. I'm not I'm not uh, in in tune with the New York Stock Exchange as I used to be back home. But so I had to kind of switch up my strategy the way I do things. So I'm no longer putting a lot of effort into momentum trading. I'm more um, buying and holding, you can say. But with that, if you're going to buy and hold, it's probably recommended to buy and hold something that at least gives you a dividend. Uh, I haven't really settled yet on placing a stop or any uh, any any like selling points on my buy and holds. So it's kind of it's kind of nerve wracking, especially when you're in margin and you have no stops in place. That's that's a that's a recipe for disaster. So with that, um, you know, I, I lean more into the ETF realm of buying and holding just because it's it's ultimately safer to to buy the baskets of of stocks rather than put all your eggs in one, uh, you know, stock. Because if, uh, you know, Google has a bad day or a bad news or something like that, which is known to happen, then you can ultimately be lose 20 30 percent and you know and if you got you know a lot of your margin in google and it drops 20 30 percent it's going to be a bad day because you're going to wish you weren't in it at that point and uh at that point you'd be margin called potentially or you'll be paying a lot of interest and you're not going to be made making a lot of money so i uh decided to go with etfs and then with that being said i did my research and I found a really nice website that uh, helps you screen for ETFs that also pay dividends. Uh, so I'm, that's what I'm going to start off with. I'm going to share that now of the the website I, that I use to, to screen my ETFs. Um, it's a free website, so you don't really have to, you don't have to buy like a $300 a year subscription or anything like that. So anybody can use it so but uh this is my uh my, my go-to website it's called stock analysis it's a it's a pretty convenient website so what i found so far i really like it of course like anything else there's a premium subscription but um i could i can get everything i need just off the free uh availability here so you go to ETFs, you can also do stocks. And like I said, though, if I'm gonna screen for stocks and I'm gonna screen for, we'll call them blue chip, blue chip companies, uh, blue chip stocks, you know, a lot of dividend traders use blue chips because they're like, they're known to pay dividends and they don't like change the way they do things. It's pretty solid companies. But uh, again, I didn't wanna, put all my money in one stock I, I'd rather I feel a lot I feel more comfortable buying uh, ETF so I'm just gonna quickly kind of walk through how I did a screen so right here is 3,000 different ETFs you got all kinds of stuff here uh, because I'm impatient uh, I don't want to wait quarterly and plus I, I did find that some of the monthly dividend payouts actually you know you do the math the quarterly ones don't pay much monthly if you break it down monthly. So in other words, um, if I find a quarterly one that pays, let's say 30 bucks or whatever, 15 cents a share, you know, it adds up to about 30 bucks or whatever. You're talking 30 bucks every three months, you know, so now you're talking $10 a month. Well, I found ETFs that um, pay anywhere from 50 to a hundred dollars a month. So, I mean, that right there is a selling point for me. But what's what kind, the catch, what kind right? of uh, so what kind of investment is that? On? Is that like uh, five, six thousand dollars to make a hundred bucks? So, 
for me, um, I started out using uh, like I, I just went all in. I was I got really greedy with the dividends. So when you start seeing free money, you you kind of shut everything else out and you got you, you tunnel vision on the money. But and that's what I did. I made that mistake. I just said. Oh wow, hundred dollars a month here. Take all my money. Take it all. I'll buy it all. You know. And then I and then I woke up the next morning and you know I was like, wait a minute. I slept on it and I was like, wait a minute. What am I doing here? Like I put, I'm doing the same thing. I'm putting all my eggs in one ETF now. So like, yeah, it's a spread of of different companies, but at the same time, I got a lot of my portfolio into that. So I stepped back and I and I looked at it and I said, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna focus around. You know, I'm going to do like 6% of my total portfolio in, in each of these ETFs. So uh, right now, um, yeah, the, the bigger ones, the high payer ones, I'm at 7%, 8%. But my rule right now is if it reaches 10% of my a, a percentage of my portfolio, I'll, I'll just I'll just take a – I'll skim off the top. So I'll just take a, a few – you know, whatever the case, you know, a few, 50 shares, I'll sell them, but I want to keep it below 10% of my portfolio is what my uh, goal is. So, uh, whatever that adds up to, then, you know, that's how much dividends I get paid out monthly. All right, got it. So you just go to this website here, uh, you go to payout, uh, frequency, you just go, you know, you select monthly, you know, and then it gives you like 600 di different stocks. Or different ETFs, and then I went to like uh, um, you know uh, dividend yield. You can get look at the yield of it, but that's that's kind of hit or miss because it could say sixty percent yield, but the the stock's only you know worth twenty bucks. I mean, now you're only like it's not just because it's got a high yield doesn't make it a high paying one. Uh, I, what I found out, um, so you you just go through and you can look and. Um, you know, it just does, what I do is I open one at a time, and then I'll see. Oh, okay, and then I'll and I'll Google how much does this pay per share, and it'll be like fifty cents, and I'll be like, okay, and then I'll say, you know, this much money times how many stocks I'm gonna buy times sixty cents, you know, and then I'll be like, oh, okay, I'll get like sixty bucks a month for this one. I'll be like, oh, okay, that's that's. I'll put that onto the side. I'll take a look at that. And I keep going, and then I, I find them, and then I'll and I'll decide which I want to go with. Uh, and the ones I've settled on, I mean, keep in mind, there's 617 different ETFs. So, I mean, there's no right answer here. It's it's really up to you how you want to, what you want to buy into. But when I open these things, let's see if this opens. So you got the, like, the Vanguard total bond market, right? So <laughs> this is a monthly uh, dividends payout. Okay, so what I'm looking at now is the expense ratio now this doesn't really apply to somebody that's like me um yeah i have some money but expense expense ratios really ding you when you have like a lot of money invested and you're holding it for years and years and years expense expense ratios will ding you so in other words like 401ks ira stuff like that like those those type of uh uh, buy-ins those are the ones you really want to pay closer attention to to your expense ratio because in the long term you can be paying a lot of money back to them uh, rather than having it uh, do like a compound for your account was that just like a fee that you uh, use so, to, to um, manage the account is that what that is yeah so uh yeah it's basically it's almost like a, yeah it's like a mutual fund. like when you buy a mutual fund you got to pay out uh to manage it so um notoriously like uh mutual funds have way higher expense ratios than etfs and it's because mutual funds are managed by actual human beings etfs are kind of just like on their own you know they kind of um yeah so you know if you have like 100 i don't know five hundred thousand dollars in uh this this uh bnd vanguard total bond and it's got an expense ratio of 0 0.03 like at the end of the year, you're only going to be paying 0 0.03 for every ten thousand dollars invested in this bond. So you will, you won't pay a lot, you know. 
but in other if you have let's say the expense ratio is 1.75 you know now you're talking 1.75 percent so you'd be surprised on how quickly that adds up at the end of the year you you be like how, how did i lose just sixteen thousand dollars like what happened well it's because the expense ratio is high so if you're in a 401k right now i highly recommend you look at your your company that you're in uh your your stock or whatever not stock but you, you know your mutual fund or your etf you're in and just take a quick look at your expense ratio and if it's above one it's probably not a very good idea you know in the long term but anyways so I just take a quick glance at uh, expense ratios. I'm just kind of learning here. And then what I look at here is I'll go to holdings because holdings are important to me. I want to know what what they're in. So like these are bonds. I'm not I'm not a fan of bonds. Like it's it's kind of like, I don't know, kind of boring to me. But um other ETFs are like you know, they got the always it's like Apple, Google, you know, all all the big uh you know mega cap companies so then i'll go to um dividends here and this is where i see okay i look at consistency they even have a nice little chart down here that i like so if you go all the way down um loading charts let's see if it loads here all right so i'm seeing like it goes up 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 down up 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 down right so the ones i bought into like you're kind of looking for a stable dividend payout, you know, that's what you're ideally, that's what I look for. So um, in this case, it's kind of a little unstable. Like this one here is only worth a penny and then it goes back up to 16 cents and then it's like worth the five cents. So, so there's other ones that I bought into that you can look at the chart here and you're, you're just looking for a consistent dividend payout. That's what I look for. And then I also look for like any gaps with so June, July, August, September, Okay, it looks like it's consistently March, April, May. Yep. So they pay out. Looks like every month. So, and you just want to look for that. That's you know, because you don't want to buy into it thinking you're good to go, and then next month you don't get no dividends, and then you go back and you're like, why did I get no dividends? And then you know, so you you want to look for something that's pretty solid. And then all I do is do the math. I'll I'll do whatever money I'm I have divided by like what i'm buying into and then i times it by uh with the latest one so 0.16 and then that's a rough estimate of how much dividends i'm going to get next month you know and uh but this this screener is pretty nice to have so and then are you just like um, <clears throat> reinvesting those dividends like what is that or, or are you just putting that in your pocket what does that look like so at first i again i got greedy so i was like oh free money Awesome, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now I started learning some more about this stuff, and uh, I don't know how long I'm going to hold these ETFs for. It might be forever. It might be tomorrow. Like I, I'm real. <laughs> like, I tend to have like these swings for some reason. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think it's just because I get bored and I just want to play, and I can't play when my money's on the side. So, but the plan is to let these guys ride. And then I'm gonna take the dividends and I'm gonna roll into it, like uh, uh, reinvest it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm still gonna be taxed on the dividends. Like right, you yeah. still get taxed, yeah. even though you think you don't, you do. Yeah. So, um, so that's not the point that I'm trying to do. What what I am doing is I, I do like a it's like a snowball effect. So there's there's videos out there you can watch that will literally show, uh, not, not this you know one. initial. Not this, was that not this one. No, no, no. Yeah. it will literally show like an investment of, I don't know, a thousand dollars. Yeah. And then for, but like, again, it's like for a long term, like 20 years later, your $1,000 <laughs> would grow to, let's say $3,000. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, in, in a span of 20 years, uh, and you would collect, um, this much dividend. So it'd be like $3,000 plus, let's say, I don't know, a thousand dollars in dividends. So you get, you'd make out a total. Of, you'd walk away with four grand. So your thousand dollar investment turned into four thousand dollars, and that's with you collecting the dividends little by little by little as you went through the twenty years. And the stock then is just it, it's appreciating. That's why it gets to the three thousand because over twenty years, it's just going to get more value, right? 
Right, yeah, yeah, so like it goes up, you know, 10% or whatever, yeah. you know. Now, reinvesting it, though, it literally shows like your $1,000 investment then turns into like $8,000 total, but you didn't collect no money. So yeah. so it's like, it, it is better. It's it's really up to you. Do, you. do you need your... So here's another piece as well that's really important is if you're using dividends to to buy into stuff like buying dividend etfs the plan is to do i need the money right now like right here right now today tomorrow the next day do i need the money no i don't need the money right now is it nice to have sure why not of course it is but do i need it right now no i don't so i'm just going to use it and i'm going to roll into it and keep th keep reinvesting it now when the time comes if you imagine let's say uh jepi i bought into i have 131 shares Okay, and it pays 41 cents a share. Okay, so if you do if you do like the math here, let's see, 131. Uh, so that's 53 bucks a month from JEPI, right? Now I'm gonna reinvest that. Boom, reinvest it. Now 53 bucks a month. That just bought me another share. How much, so now how I'm much at one. How much are the shares? 53 bucks. Oh, okay. it's 53 bucks a share. Okay. So. I just bought another share. So now I'm at next month, I'm at 132, right? And then times 41. So now I'm at 54 bucks and I bought another share. Okay. So now I'm at 133. You get the point. So you keep going. And then let's say 10 years from now, which I would like, I think I deserve an award. If I hold on to JEPI for 10 years, like we'll make it a war. I don't know. I might have gotten a car accident. I might have been handicapped, like to the point where I can't think for myself. You know what? If that happens, my wife would probably still be in JEPI. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be like, that was smart, babe. You yeah. did a great day. You know? So and that's another thing about these. You can set these things up for your spouse because let's be honest here, ninety nine percent of spouses don't give a shit about this stuff. So yeah, yeah, um yeah, I I don't know how many traders I've talked to. Their spouses are like don't even want to do basic math. They don't want nothing to do with it, right? Yeah. But uh, um, but this this is a almost like a safe plan for you because honestly, like I could speak for my wife. If I were to die or if I were to get seriously injured to the point where I I was not functioning. She wouldn't do shit with this stock thing. She wouldn't even – the damn shit. thing would probably just sit there. No, you know? my, my wife would be over there like, how do I cash it? Like, I, give, me all yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> give me all the money. I, I would hope my <laughs> wife wouldn't say that. You know, my wife yeah. – maybe on my last breath, I'd be like, just leave it alone. Yeah. Don't touch <laughs> yeah. it and then fucking die. You know? yeah. And then, you know, yeah. but who knows, right? So, but the, the point is, is like – um she could leave this alone and it, it was compounding on itself now let's say you know she turns 65 years old and she's just not making do with social security no more and she's like what the hell like my life sucks what what's up with this uh what's up with this market deal that my husband bought into a long time ago well at this point jepi is now let's say up to i don't know let's say it compounded like every month 500 shares you know yeah, let's let's just give it a juicy number here. Let's say seven hundred and fifty shares, Damn, right? Seven fifty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Seven hundred and fifty shares. Now you look at historical records of JEPI, you know, it started out at five cents a uh, dividends per share and now it's up to forty one cents. So you can imagine ten years from now, yeah, the dividends is probably gonna be in ballpark at three dollars a share. Let's be honest here, right? So three dollars a share. So you got seven hundred and fifty shares now. Now you're getting two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars a month, mm -hmm. just off that one. Yeah. So that's that's the point of reinvesting it. That's that's the that's yeah. like the biggest uh, gain nah, of of nah. doing this. Now I've got some of those in my um, account too that I reinvest some of the dividend ones. And uh, what's yeah. in, what's interesting to me is like uh, so like my account's a little bit smaller, right? Uh, but I've got SPY, so SPY is a couple hundred dollars a share, right? Um, okay. I, I think I only have two shares, right? But when it reinvests it, because it doesn't have enough money to buy a whole nother share, it buys like a fraction of the shares. 
So like, yeah, that's another benefit as well. Yep, yeah, you're so, right. So I have like 2.005 shares of SPY or something, you know. But it doesn't matter because you, you, they'll do the math for you. Yeah, You'll get it, a little bit of dividend for every little yeah, piece. Yeah, keep growing. Yeah, yeah. Like you don't need the full amount to buy another share, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's even, I mean, no matter what, it's going to compound yeah. uh, regardless, yeah. uh, which is kind of nice. So I pulled up JEPI. This is a good one. I'd, I'd recommend this one. Now, the expense ratio is 0.35, which, again, it doesn't really matter, but it's just something to keep in mind, especially if you're in a – this is a retirement one. Um, then I look at – you know, I'll go to holdings. So right here, I'll, I'll read this stuff here. So total assets, blah, blah, blah. All right, so it's got, you know, a lot of name brand kind of companies that I'm familiar with. I, I could probably tell you each one of these. I get kind of nervous when I'm flipping through it and I don't, I've never even heard of any of these companies. Like it kind of makes me nervous, but a lot of these are, you know, a progressive corporate Hershey's, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, you know, these are all like well-established multi-billion dollar companies, you know? So, uh, this is a good holdings. And then I look at dividends here and this one pays 41 cents per share. It's $53 a share, which is really good. Yeah. Uh, the payout ratio is 256 percent wow um and it's it's almost too good to be true it's kind of like that's something's not right but um you can look at the like the different timeline so back in 2020 it was 29 cents a share um you know and it slowly increased to 41 so that's only two years so yeah so the the point is is like I, I just think that the reinvesting of the dividends is a good idea and I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna try it out. But yeah, the bad it, side is um it's a long term plan. It's uh yeah, and it, it's costing me a lot in margin fees yeah. uh to do this. Yeah. So um yeah, so I'm gonna have to like think of something um, as we go. What what I'm hoping is these ETFs continue to go up in value, which would then not really lower my equity percent because that's what the margin people that's what the margins looking at is like the total value of your entire portfolio to include margin. So if I were to go negative, let's say my whole entire portfolio goes negative 30%, 40%, my equity percent is going to drop down a lot. And then the margin, the people are going to be like, hey, look, your, 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 your portfolio is not doing good and we want our money. So <laughs> yeah. uh, we're going to sell some stuff without your permission. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And then they're going to, they're going to get theirs. They're not going to get taken. So, uh, so yes, I'm paying a high monthly interest rate, uh, not, not, a, uh, you know, uh, yeah, a high monthly interest rate. Yeah. But what I'm hoping for is those ETFs will then gain value. So I'll pay the rate, but let's say, uh, perfect example is like today I made 126 bucks, uh, change. So positive 126. Yesterday I made positive 246. So that's, you know, whatever you do the math, that's like 360. Yeah. 360 positive gain in two days, right? Well, that right there is more than what my monthly interest rate is. So yes, I'm paying a monthly interest rate. Yes, it is dinging my overall portfolio. But at the same time, I'm still making money off this stuff. And I'm making dividends. So as long as, just like anything else, as long as the market keeps going up, in this case, then I'll be good to go, you know? So. Yeah. All right, so I, that's all I wanted to pass with the, uh, with the, uh, you know, ETFs and, and the uh, uh, dividends trading. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see this, but I reinvested all of these, mm -hmm. so. Um, but yeah, my first, my initial thought was to take the money and then, uh, reinvest it how I see fit. Uh, but I mean, just like you said, it makes a good point. I can buy, well, I can buy, you can buy, um, you know, what are they called? Uh, 
sex sections or slivers or something they name it yeah. where you can buy pieces of uh the stock i i'm just not a fan of that it's either i'm gonna buy a whole stock or, or a whole share or not you know what i mean it's, yeah. it's just all there is to yeah but uh um yeah you can reinvest it and then in due time yeah it, it would be it'd pay huge so you know let's say i'm fast forward let's say i never touched these things i held true with what i thought starting today <laughs> and uh, I'm fifty. I'm fifty five years old. Yeah. And I look at my uh, my ETFs that I've been holding forever, and I see that I'm making, you know, two two thousand three thousand dollars easily a month on dividends. At that point, I can decide I'm not going to reinvest no more. I'm just going to do this. So I t- turn off no to reinvestments, and then I put in auto transfer to my checking account. Two thousand dollars a month, and that's it. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. So now I'm all of a sudden two thousand dollars is going to pop up in my checking account every month. Bam! So I'm paying myself a dividend, but it it takes money to do that. So uh, reinvesting right now is is the plan. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Yep. Good luck to you. All right. Let's see. All right. All right. Yeah. So then uh, I'll just go over. Kind of where we're at. So yesterday I made a, a quick little video. We talked about uh, the positions I'm in and my current watch list. So just like I talked about yesterday, um, I had maybe four stocks that I talked about that I was like, hey, these are probably going to fall off my watch list today just because they no longer meet my parameters. And uh, just like I suspected, that happened. So, um, but we'll get to that in a second. But as we can see. Mastercraft boats. Um, you know, I talked about it yesterday. How it was trading here, kind of in the cloud, uh, maybe a little bit below. Really, you know, yesterday what I had said was if it fell below the bottom of this cloud, it's probably going to stop out. Uh, what we can see today is it's still inside the cloud. Um, looks like the bulls are trying to take control. I'm not real confident on this one. I think this one is actually going to lose me money in the long run. Uh, I won't, this one, I won't be happy until it's like, if it gets up to here, then I'll be like, all right, we're, we're probably in the, in the realm of making some money, but um, right now, probably not a great one uh, to be sitting in. Uh, ADI, ADI uh, surprised me today. I don't know why, you know, it took, it's uh, let's see, minus almost 2%. Um, still you know above the cloud above the fibonacci line above this fan line so there's a lot of resistance right here that's going to prop it up um i'd really like to see this thing sort of turn around though i don't know why it failed the way it did um, we can see that it's already gone through this fan line that was giving it a little bit of uh of support um yeah, i meant to say support down here not resistance a little bit of support here uh, obviously fell through that so if it if it gets past here, we're gonna have a problem. Uh, they, they is it is there? Did they release like bad news or something? Or no, there was no no news. What what is this? Is this a tech company? Yeah. Analog devices. Analog devices incorporated. They make uh yeah they make like uh, super con- or microchips or something like that. It's like yeah, super semiconductors. Con- semiconductors. That's it. Yep. Um, and they're kind of like in their own little space, right? Like so they don't occupy the same even though they're technically the same as like on if you've heard of on semiconductors um, no in taiwan semiconductors but analog devices make semiconductors for a different space of the market uh so i don't know why they've fallen i mean they had kind of a good little run they were going on i was really you know hoping there's a keep up on that but Starting to get a little bit nervous here. Like I said, we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's a pretty solid candlestick, that red one there. Yeah. That's a, that's a sign there's bears or yeah. they got it. I want to say the PPS hit a sell signal on it today too. So I would imagine it's probably going to come down even further. What I'd like to see though is it like sort of bounce off this support here and it start to climb back up. And then maybe in a week we'll see where it is, you know, based off of RSI. And, uh, so I know you don't. I know you don't uh, like to move your fans or nothing like that. I get that. Um, is there? 
do you use a hard rule of placing your fans? It just seems like they're kind of close than yeah. they should be. So the fans, what I've been doing for these is uh, when I draw the chart, this, the, the upward fans, this, you see this one that says one to one? Yeah. That's the center. That's the center line, right? So the center line always goes to the top of the highest body. Right, so not the stick. Okay. If this, so if imagine if this had a wick way the hell up here, the, yeah. it would still go to intersect the body, right? And then the same okay. the same thing with the down one. So the down one, we see our, it's hard to see. So here's our one-to-one, -one. you see it down here? Yeah. All right, so our one-to-one -one goes to the lowest red body, right, on the way down. Uh, so when I drew this chart, that's what it was. And then, and this is all based upon where I determined that the the furthest swing was, uh, which I determined was this green bar. So I said that this is where the swing was, and then I placed the fans based off of that. Um, yeah, that gap up, would you say, kind of skewed the results? Yeah. On the 13th? Yeah, that, that definitely uh, affected some things. Because yeah, it looked like it gapped up and then kind of now was, it's trading sideways. Yeah, that was the earnings day. Yep, so it gapped up and then it gapped back down a little bit, fell really. And then it's trying to consolidate and figure out which way it's going. And then it started to run up a little bit. Um, and I bought in on this day right here. Again, this was a gap up day. So I saw it come, coming down. I saw it, what I interpreted it to be like respecting this fan line. And I was like, okay, well, if it's above this, because I always look for, the, like, I try to buy on the third day. So I need two days of it respecting a fan line. And then on the third day, I want to buy in. So that's what I did. So here's the third day. I got real excited this day. I was like, oh, man, uh, I got to get in. I had my FOMO kicked in a little bit. I got in, like, right, mm -hmm. here, right here. As we can see, like, uh, it went up above that and then came back down and ultimately settled pretty much at the point that I bought it. Fell down the next day. That, was, that must have been nerve wracking right there on the. Uh, yeah. Like right there in that cross section right there. I mean. Right here, yeah. And then it probably was a good feeling when it busted through it. Yep. Right. Yep. And then it started going up, and you're thinking, oh, this yeah. is this is going to work out because yep. it, it it looks like it's going to continue to go up that line. Yep. And there's no uh, and there's no resistance up here. Yeah, there's you know? nothing there. It's all green. It's yeah. ready to go. And then it just all of a sudden decided to not go down that line. <laughs> yeah, I said, I said for fuck, some reason. I said, hey, you know what? Fuck, and you're, fuck and there's no news or nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Yeah. No news. Yeah, nothing. All yeah. right. Yeah, and we can and see. Then, it, so it, what's that? What's that dot? What's that checkered line you got there? Uh, is that? One? Did you place that there? No, no, no. That's just. Uh, I don't know what that is. Is that part of the fan thing? That might be part of the fan thing. Yeah, not very oh. sure. Oh. Why is it checkered? No, it's kind of weird. I don't like it. Yeah. I, I thought maybe you placed it there. Nah, no. Nah. I used to. I used to put 45 degree lines on here because the fan lines are at 45 degree angles. But I started to really think about it, and and I'm like well, that doesn't that kind of defeats the purpose these things you know what i mean like the purpose is to find where they are so all the fans now look different you know what i mean like this one looks way you know looks well not way different but looks a little bit different you know than this one you know yeah. but it, but again on this one the low is kind of close to when the lows and highs are close to where the swing is that's why they're real compacted uh this is lazy so this one did this this one gapped up too. Yeah. It gapped up and skewed the results again. Yeah. Th this this day after earnings it too. You can see or two days after earnings, because here's the gap up. It's hard to see, but this line right here is a gap up, and then it's it, just a solid wick. Yeah. So it went, it went, it opened up here, went up, fell down, went up, and then rested down. So it's a red bar because it closed below open. But yeah, it gapped way the hell up after earnings. But what's important about this one, I talked about it yesterday. So if you imagine looking at this without seeing this bar, here's where it was yesterday. And I said that, all right, it's just above the cloud. We'll have to see what happens. If it, if it gets above the cloud up here on Wednesday, 
I'll, I'll feel pretty good about it. And then today we can see, so this cloud does a weird thing. So as you mentioned, um, you know, it gapped up. So that's why there's a steep spike that you can see. If I don't put my cursor over, you see what I'm talking about? That steep spike for the cloud. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah that, I see it. that's because of this, right? So to feel good about this one. That's a weird one. Yeah, we yeah, need. that's a weird one. So if it tomorrow, see you tomorrow it, it should bust through a bunch of those lines tomorrow if it if it rides up on the top of the cloud there if it rides that cloud it's going to pop through all this resistance and that's going to feel real good and then um we'll see what goes from there um, you is know, there any uh post -mar market information out on this see. thing uh, lazy boy lazy boy i don't know yeah i i wonder if it's already up two percent or something crazy uh, That'd be awesome. I doubt it. We'll see. CBCO. Um, this one, I feel pretty good about this one. Uh, this one I have marked. No, not yet. So I'm probably going to let this one ride a bit. Um, I was telling you, I've been, if it starts to get some of the juice out to where like there's not 20% room to gain anymore in them, uh, then I start focusing on where they are on the RSI. Um, and then if it's, you know, close to, to max out that RSI, then I'm going to just sell them and walk away. This one, still a little bit of room to go. Um, so we, we'll probably let it ride and see if it gets uh, to the top of my pivot point, which would be a 7% gain. So that would be pretty good. Um, I, I definitely like how this one's positioned right now. There's no, the next real resistance is the top of the chart right here, that top fib line. Um, if it can bust through there, it will be looking pretty good. So we'll see how it goes. And then GPK. GPK, I've got this one marked to sell soon. Um, looking for it to hit 65 on the RSI today. I think it was at 60.9 when it closed. So we're getting pretty close. Uh, one more good day like this, and I think we'll be in the green. I probably won't make very much money off of this one. Um, just walk away with a couple dollars in my pocket you know how come uh so you it's the one that's not a one-to-one -one ratio no that's, no 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 yeah so I'm not, is that I'm that's not, like half of this, <laughs> one to zero to three this, this one this one's a point three four right uh they're oh not my. they're not one-to-ones anymore so this one is a 2.27 uh this is a 1.65 there's a 2.1. So these are all, this is a 1.8. These are all based off of those pivots. Remember I tell you about the pivots? And so that's not a, that's not a, a no-go for you if the, I mean, if you're risking more than you could potentially gain, you don't, that's, you'll still buy into it. So like um, you're risking a lot on this one. This one. So this one was, this one's a crazy one. So for one, um, it's got FOMO written all over it. No, 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 no. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, maybe. So this one, I, I used the bar chart. Remember when I changed my strategy about the bar chart stuff? Oh, okay. Yeah, I used the bar. This is a I used the bar, between thing. Mm -hmm. I used the bar chart yeah. to buy in, and I changed my exit strategy in the middle of this one. So this one's okay. A, a yeah. Weird. So this right. one, I'm just trying to get back to even, right? So, right. Uh, you know, so I mean, you're just trying to break even on this one. Yeah, like, and I mean, you know, like we it. like we talk about, like we do this because we're learning. You know what I mean? So you know, right. so, sometimes we try new things. This one, I tried something new. Um, if I break even, I'm happy because <laughs> I'm only, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm only looking to make three percent now on this one. Um, yeah, I, I personally, I have to like do it in order to like retain it if yeah. i i can read it and and learn about it but i i won't retain it unless i actually do it and then yeah uh, i'll decide if i like it or not so yeah so those are all the positions i'm in and i just wanted to go over three on my watch list uh today um so I'll, I'll don't you hate it when your watch list is all green <laughs> i know I, I i pulled one off of my watch list earlier it had a nine percent gain today Oh, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, yeah, but that sucks. It's off, you know. Yeah, but who would have known? Like it was not. In oh yeah, I mean, yeah. look at SI. That shit went up like sixty percent after yeah. I sold it. Yeah. So here's LRN. All right. So LRN, I talked about yesterday. So I've got this marked as a need second day 
validation. Uh, so what that really means here is I've got it on this line. It closed above the line. I want to see what it does tomorrow. All right. So if it's above the line tomorrow at close, then on Wednesday, I'll be looking to buy in. And now I know it's, it's in the cloud right now, but I think, I think it'll, you know, I'm, I'm happy with this one if it continues to go and follow this line up. Uh, Do you have an idea where your limit's going to be placed at on mm, this one? I'd have to pull up uh, Thinkorswim. Because you got a lot of resistance there. There's all kinds of lines. Yeah, give me a second. Let's see. Where did it go? It looks like the fan gets tighter and tighter as you go up, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't, I won't share the thinkorswim thing, but I'll just log in and look and see where. Uh... All right, so LRN, if I were to buy in, the, uh, the, the limit would be at 45.94, which is gonna be like up here somewhere. And the stop, it also has a PPS buy signal today. The stop would be at 3714. So 3714 would be down here somewhere. So this one's going to be probably like a three to one type of deal. Yeah, it looks like it. You know, and this would, and again, like the way I'm kind of doing it is that uh, I'll set those as the stops and the limits just in case, you, you know, in my opinion, it's always good to have the stops and limits on there all the time. That's kind of like having training wheels on the bicycle, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then, and then I'll watch it, and whenever it gets to the point that there's less than 20% gain in there, then I'll start paying attention to the RSI and be like, all right, if it's if it's getting close to the to the uh, overbought territory, then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna sell it and just take whatever profit I got. Okay, so you're 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 gonna be monitoring the RSI and stuff while yeah, you do this. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Let me see here. And then the, uh, the next one I want to show you, AGM. So AGM, I just added on the list today. Here's another one. Um, I've got this marked as a need second day validation. So we see that it gapped up today, right in this uh, fan line. And now you see these fans are spread out a little bit more compared to the ones we looked at earlier. Yeah. Um, but it's right in this fan line. Uh, but we can see it, it kind of did this in the past. This past week it was traded sideways. So I need to see it above the fan line again tomorrow. Here's another one that's kind of in the cloud. You know how I feel about that, but mm -hmm. I, I do also want to get into something. So I, I think it's a risk I'm willing to take. Uh, eight, and the black lines are 200 day EMA. That's right, 200, yeah. 200 day EMA. And then that's a no-go for you, right? If it's below the EMA, you're not even interested. That's a hard stop. Hard stop for me is that EMA. Yeah. Now on this one, I just pulled up the pivots. Oh, you're gonna love this. So the limit would be at 159.31, which is gonna be like way the hell up here. <laughs> and then this. That's so. And this, What's the RSI at? Like 30? The RSI on this one's 44. And then the, uh, the limit or the stop is gonna be at 116.45. Which is gonna be like down here. That's a huge window. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it had a huge run up back in February, yeah, in March. Mm -hmm. I mean, it went up a lot. Yeah, you're talking like thirty bucks. Yeah, and if it yeah, that's if, crazy. If I bought into here and it ran back up, and you see it kind of followed along on the bottom side of this fan line, so that doesn't make me feel too comfortable. But this is also the one to one line too, so this would this would have looked different. You know what I mean? Because I would have been using data from back here. Um, but yeah. So well, if that's your if that's your limit, that, like that line there is your limit, and you put your limit at that, you know, one fifty or whatever. It seems like you're gonna, it'll hit one to one that one to one line right about it. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and who knows? Like again, as it gets keeps going, because uh, let's see AGM if we go here. 
AGM. So the Federal Agriculture Mortgage Corporation. So they they finance uh, agricultural land. Yeah. So mortgage they, company. So here's what oh, I'm talking about. It's yeah. got a 36 percent. there. Yeah, 36 yeah. percent average. So once this gets this number gets below 20, that's when I'm looking to take gains. All right. So you're only you're only that's only six analysts though. Like that's they're, not many. Right for this particular one, they're they're different for each one. Yeah. But you're right. That is. That aren't is, you worried? Aren't you worried? Like the housing market's all jacked up right now. Aren't you worried that like this is a mortgage company? Like who who really has money right now? Yeah. to like invest in a, in in a agricultural land. I mean everything's jacked up. Uh distributions all messed up. The in, the fees are higher. Everything's I mean, yeah, aren't you kind of worried about that? Not really. Only because of the the type of swing trading that I do is just solely focused on the technical analysis. You know what I mean? Like I don't really focus on what the company's doing or their financial statements. Like I don't even open any of that stuff i'm purely when i get to this point of looking at the the company like it's already made its way through all my my filters right to even get here once it gets here i'm purely looking at where it is in relation to the fans the fans the ema and the cloud now the thing that makes me nervous is it's inside the cloud um and that's sometimes that's tough for a company to get out of that like we can see like here it did pretty good uh, but then it gets up here, falls back down, you know, so uh, we can see if we go back here, you know, it came up and went below the cloud, tried to come up, fell back down. Like it, that cloud, that's a, that's a tough thing for some, some companies to get through. Um, but this is why. Uh, do you know, do you know any idea why it dropped on the like March 3rd, looks like, or March 7th, 6th? The 6th, no. Uh, like it plummeted. Like yeah. I plummeted. Yeah, I mean, you had $30 earnings. a share. The only thing I could think of is that um, you had earnings. So the build up to earnings, you know, probably investors were hyping this thing up. Oh, this is great. Earnings came out. It's real, real well. Rode the wave a little bit. And then I'm thinking people are probably just pouring money out. They're taking, you know, they're taking their winnings and moving on. Uh, and now it's back down to here. So. I mean, we can see it, it does that historically, right? Like it'll run up and they take the earnings and it'll go back down. Oh shit. And then it'll, uh, mm. it'll run up, you know, same thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, Wasn't sure if it had something to do with like the interest rate hikes or job perform, you know, job percentages or whatever the hell. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, if you remember, in um in the first part of the month we had a couple bad weeks if you remember um mm -hmm. where everything did bad did poorly so it could have also been a little bit of that too you know but we'll see like i said yeah. i need to see what tomorrow brings um and then we'll check back in on wednesday and we'll see how it goes i mean it could very well just fall back down to here tomorrow and then i'm not even interested anymore you know um, mm -hmm. because now it's either now it's going to have to get back into the, above this blue line because i'm even if it's here i don't know how interested i am if it's right in this line you know yeah now it'll probably be below the 200 day yeah exactly i mean it, it would be right so i really wouldn't be interested even if it got back above the 200 day that top of that cloud, like I told you before, like this cloud is a real good indicator of support and resistance. So worst case scenario, I think this thing closes somewhere around the bottom of the cloud tomorrow. And if that happens, like I'm still not interested. I need it above this blue line. It's got to be above that blue line for two days in a row for me to even be like wanting in, you know. And then right. the last one I got, this one, uh, I've got marked as a buy on open tomorrow with a question mark. I always do that. Like, uh, if I say buy on open, I'll put a question mark because it depends on how it opens. Uh, but this is VGR. What? 
Jeez, that's right at the 200 day moving average. It's right at the 200 day, which it kind of excites me a little bit because we can see it tested it. It's, it tried to go through it, came back above it, broke through the cloud, fell back down, bounced, fell below it, came back, closed above it. So if, it's, if it rides this line tomorrow, I'm probably going to get in. Now this one, I'm already recognizing it as being like kind of a risky... It's a risky one to buy into. Um, that's an LTD too, so that's a K1 form. Yeah, good. I love Texas. Uh, <laughs> the and the room to gain on this was not not great, but I'm testing. Yeah, I thought I thought. What about the cloud? This is it's below the cloud. I know. The problem is, is I want to buy something, and I don't have anything to buy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's an LTD. Which is a tax nightmare. It's yeah. below the cloud. Yeah. It just barely broke through the 200-day moving average. I know. I know. And you talk about buying on open. That just goes against all your fucking I rules. I said maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's the, a huge question mark. The, uh, yeah, the, um, what you call it? Uh, and it's $11 a share. It's a goddamn, damn near a penny stock. Well, not yet. It's $6 above penny territory. The stop would be at... 1324 so like right here basically oh so it's got to bust through the cloud and make it halfway through it yeah and i the, mean just the wick that's all you need yeah and the limit would be nine dollars and thirty cents so way the fuck no, you mean yeah you you're right you got to reverse that the stops at 9 30 limits that's, at oh yeah that's yeah. right yeah 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 so 9 30 yeah it's way holy shit yeah, I don't know. That's the, gonna be like the what the fu what about the moving average? Uh, you know, you know. The more we talk about God. it, the less I like this one. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe I just want to. I thought I thought your stop would at least be at the moving average. I mean, <laughs> really? Yeah, that's uh, that's where they got it. You know. Oh, wow. I might there ain't not. No I, way. I might not buy it. If I don't buy it, I'm gonna kick myself because it's probably gonna go to the moon. You know, that's how these things go. <laughs> yeah. I don't right. Know. Uh, but you're right. This one, lots of question marks. It does kind of go against my strategy. I just want to buy something is all. So maybe I just need to wait, sit on the sideline, and hope these other two. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. I mean, if I, if I were to count on one hand all, all your rules, it breaks, like, all of them. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't even see what the fuck you're talking about here. Yeah. This is a good one. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Yeah. All right. Let me, uh, I know we've been on for a minute, but yeah. um, I could quickly go through my NDC one just on one stock kind of thing. Okay. And... Just kind of wave top it. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, shit. All right. Uh. Oh, I think I did something wrong. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, did uh, <laughs> I started getting into the matrix there. The wrong, Give me a second, the wrong button. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the hell. I think I clicked the button two times or something. All right, all right. So we already talked the, about the um, dividends. All right, and then uh, so I started thinking, okay, what am I doing here? Uh, I got the dividends that's kind of like going long or buying and holding, whatever you want to call it. But then there's there's day traders, and then there's this other thing called swing traders. Swing traders look for momentum. So momentum, momentum, that's the key word, momentum. I want momentum up, all right? I'm not short selling. I'm not momenting down. I don't care about that. I want up. So because um, uh, most of our strategies, both of ours are like, in the upward direction that's how we kind of tailor everything so just continue learning that way all right so right here i have netflix um how did i pick netflix well quickly i don't really have a solid plan on how i do this it's kind of just i go off intuition and some data so uh i'll go to like finviz i'll pull up sectors and i'll just eyeball it you know i'll just i'll look at like 
one month uh, communication service technology. Then I'll look at one week and be like, okay, the energy communication services, ball of technologies down here. All right. One day, really, it's just a day. So I don't really take into consideration. So I'll be like, okay, one week, what was the top? one week, one month, communication services. So let's try communication services. So I'll go to comm services um, in the sectors here, go to communication services. Um, and this is just a general rule. This is kind of like what I do, kinda, and sometimes I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't know what just happened there, but anyways, um, yeah, but you can go to like sector communication services and then um, you can also screen it back down to within the communication services, what's doing the best, right? Um, uh, if you go like communication services, you go broadcasting. Um, again, one week, one month. So you got internet content. Let's see, internet content, electronic gaming. Electronic gaming looks kind of hot right now. Today was low, but, you know, let's check it out. So I'll click on that. And that's how I, I kind of screen what I'm looking at. And then, uh, so there's 24 stocks there. And then what I'll go to is a momentum screener. It's kind of something I set up. It's nothing fancy. But what it does is it, it highlights, um, it highlights average. So I'm looking for uh, above 500K average volume and then uh, relative volume uh, over 1.5. Now you see, um, I don't have it. I don't have the industry selected here of the communication, uh, whatever we, it was the gaming. Yeah. Uh, I don't have it selected, but I do have just the volume going. So this is another way I do it. Um, so I'll, I'll start off for the 200 day. Now this is the SMA, not the EMA, but I mean, it's still a moving average. So I use this. Um, I do the 200 day. Let's see what's above 200 day. Okay, now I'm down to 45. So I'll be like, okay, let's do 50 day. What is above the 50 day? And then it'll probably lower even, it'll go down even lower. So now I'm down to 24. And I'll say, okay, let's see above the 20 day. And then it'll probably lower even further down. Right? So now I'm down to 22. And then what I do is I'll look at charts. And this one, I'm just kind of eyeballing, you know. Um, I'm just looking at stuff like this one gapped up, you know, came back down, went up. Uh, you know, I'm looking at kind of something that's going to show some positive momentum soon. Um, and, in you know, I'll just, I'll, I'll pick one and like I'll just open it. So like I'll GRTX, I'll pull up uh, a trading view and I'll just pop, type in GRTX and then I'll start analyzing it this way. Now Netflix is the one I picked uh, by doing that. Yeah. Now how did why did I pick Netflix? All right, so um, I bought into Netflix today. I put a market order for uh, to buy like when the market opens, and um, that's only because I'm I'm in a different time zone and it's just a nightmare. So. Uh, so that's again why I'm doing this momentum. I'm finding momentum, identifying it, and I'm just pulling the trigger. I'm not waiting for a, I'm not setting a limit order or anything like that. I just don't have the the ability right now to monitor it as I would like to. So I'm doing market orders right now. But ideally, I would I would set a limit, I would set a limit order to buy, so I can get it at a good price. But in this case, I'm just doing a market order. I'm just looking for momentum. So um, we already know it's got good volume. We already know uh, the relative volume is good. So in this case, I bought it. I, I saw it this day. Today is it closed right here. So these are the different indices I use. So I'll use this one here. Um, so what this one shows, what's this it, is the, um, what is it, the D? DMI? It's like the D, DMI. No, uh, yes, DMI. I don't have this one. Directional moving indicator. Yeah, yeah, it's a DMI. Yeah. Um, 
and I changed the color scheme. So the blue line is like the DMI. Um, so it's a directional moving indicator, meaning like, uh, um, is it gonna, it, is it, the DMI is just showing how much power, like how much juice it has. Uh, so if it's above 20, that means there's good momentum. It could be up or down. It just means it's moving. And if it's below 20, that's like not go, good momentum. That means it's going to start trading sideways. And if it's above like 25, that's even better momentum. But so I, I just put the blue line here. So I, it's, it's right above 20. Now, what I'm really looking at is this red and green. So what I've noticed here is if you put them all together, as you can see, the blue line here, the red crossed over the green. So that means the bears are in control, the momentum's above 20, and the bulls are losing. Now, the blue line's in below the red, so that means that's a negative trend. In this case, if you go back even further, the red crossed the green, which is now the, bear, the bulls are in control. The blue was struggling a little bit, and then it got through the red, and now it's below the green. So now the bulls are in control here. So that's a positive momentum indicator. So this that's what this, this is showing here. Now, if I if you look at today, what happened? Okay, okay, you have the red cross the green. Bulls are in control. The blue is just starting to break through the red so the within the next couple days you're going to see it's going to reflect it's going to look something like this the red the blue, green with the blue below it and the red below it. so I, that's how i'm picturing this going down mm -hmm. so that's a good sign that means that there's there's a potential for positive momentum meaning that it's going to go up um next indicator looking at is the um yeah i don't even I have this other count open, so that I don't have the naming convention on this. Yeah. Um, I'd it, have to. It's hard to see. I'd have it's to hard, like. It's hard to see on our end. Okay, so this one here. Okay, I won't even talk about it. But it, you know, if it's above, if it's above zero, that means it's a positive indicator. If it's below zero, that's a negative indicator. It means it's going to go down. Okay. Um. It's crazy as you, as you talk, like it, like kind of fades in. It's like taking time to like. It looks great now. When you first started talking, like, I couldn't see anything. There's a black screen. Oh, there it is. It's gone. <laughs> oh. Am I, can you see me? Could you see it? I see it now. Yeah. Nothing? I, I see it. I see it. All right. Yeah. So, all right. So, you see the green crossed over the red right here? Yeah. All right. And you look straight up. Look what happened. So, it goes up, 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 up. Momentum, momentum. You see that? Yeah. And then it crossed over the the red crossed over, and look at the bear, the bull, the bears got it. You see that? Oh, yeah. Down, down, down. Yeah. Now look, it's going up, 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 up. So that's a good sign. That's a good sign. Now this one here is my MACD stochastic and RSI. These are my other three indicators. So now I'm looking for these to show positive momentum. If you look right here, the orange is above the blue. And it goes down, 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 down. Plus, you got these red bars here. And then as the, the blue goes above the red, orange, that's positive momentum. You see right here, positive. Up, 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 up. Crosses over, down, 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 down. Crosses over, up, 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 up. That's what I'm expecting. If you pop it up, look at it bigger. So, so this is a down, 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 up, 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 down, down, down up 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 so that's another indicator that's going to go up so right now we're three for three right so now here's the stochastic this one this one's kind of funky to me um the blue line is too choppy so what i look at is kind of the, the orange line only um if you want to know what that is you'd have to open this up and it'll explain it's the percentage of d uh, you can Google it or whatever, but I look at the the orange. So, orange below this line here is showing positive. It's going to go up, 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 up. Now, as it broke through, you know, it started trading barely up, but it was still kind of had strong momentum up because it's in the upper levels. Yeah. 
But uh, as it broke down through, it went down, and now it's trading down. It has negative momentum down here, down, 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 down. And now so showing that it's breaking through, it's going up again. So just like it did here, went up, momentum, down, negative momentum, up, momentum, and that. So this is also showing some positive momentum from what I see. Now, the RSI you're familiar with. Yep. Uh, here I'll open this up real quick. So yeah, it goes up. That's that's uh, negative momentum, and then uh, negative momentum, and then up, positive, 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 down, negative, 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 up, positive, positive, and that's what I'm hoping for. So right now that's also showing positive momentum. Now RSI. So RSI is I look at the purple and the the yellow. If I can, if it it's kind of choppy as well. Same with the stochastic. So, but this one also kind of does the same thing. So, if you look at like right here, it's kind of in the middle there, um, yeah. but it goes up. It's overbought. Yeah. Right here. So you'd expect it to start to wanna go down. And if you look right here, if you look at all three, look at all three on this line right here. This is the day that it decided to go down. So you got RSI overbought stochastics already heading down and you got the blue crossing over or the purple the 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 orange crossed over the blue so this day right here like ask yourself would you sell it on this day i mean it's showing all three indices are showing negative momentum yeah. that it's going to go down yeah i mean no in theory if you were yeah press the sell button yeah I always look at the, I say I always look at these, and it's like, you know, armchair quarterback in it. It's very easy to go back and like, oh yeah, obviously you sell right there. It's about to drop, but it's hard for me like real time. You know, like if you don't, if you don't look at the days past, what day was that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. It's so. That's tough. That's that's true. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, you're so, right. You're right, though. But it's it's a hard it's hard to to do real time, you know. So what I so what I do is um, to help picture this. I, I go back and I and I play a movie and I'll watch the lines here. This one's going really fast, but um, So I just watched the movie. It's going up. And then see it crossed over. And then as you watch it, it it'll slowly. So I watch it all the way to the end. And I'm watching how the lines move with one another. And uh, this helps me as well kind of identify potential uh momentum so i so stochastic already looked pretty good but you see how it kind of didn't quite work out yeah and that's probably what you're talking about now it just opened up the last three bars it just opened up um but again like what how i'm looking at this is as a whole not as a one a singular thing so i'm I, i'm looking at individually so macd's looks positive stochastic looks positive rsi looks positive and these two indices also look positive uh so right now this it show, it's showing strong momentum positive momentum um now that's why i pulled the trigger and i bought it yeah. on market order now the the only questionable thing is um the fact that the cloud right so uh, i'm looking at this cloud you just, and, you just um, started using this, huh? the cloud? Right, I just applied it to yeah, this yeah. just to kind of watch it. Yeah. And it, if you look, this is the day that I put the market order in, and it's right at the base of the cloud, like just barely broke through it. The, yeah. the wick went through it, and then it came back down, yeah. and then went back up, or whatever, yeah. and it stopped right there. The next day, it opened, you know, about right at the base of the cloud again, no, it opened. Right. Below, it, opened below, it, it opened below the cloud. What, like right here? No, where where the very bottom uh, is is the open. Open at three twenty seven fifty five. 
Let's see. 327.55 is like right there. Oh, you yeah, must, it's about right at the body. You must have different. Yeah. You must have different candles in. I got the the no, the normal candles. 327.55. But uh, yeah, so right here it says open 327.55. The high was 336.44, and the low was 324.41. On that, Closed no, at no, 327. What, what, what's the other day say? Uh, opened at 320.63. Yeah, so what's 320.63 look like? Uh, 320.63. Yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. That's what I That's the one. Maybe we were talking about two different sticks because I was talking about that that candlestick. Yeah, no, this one. No, I was talking about this one. Oh, okay. it, just today. Yeah, I got you. Today it opened yeah, like yeah. at the base of the yep. cloud, mm -hmm. so it, it didn't really change. There was no aftermarket type of stuff, so yeah. or pre-market for, for that matter. So it opened at the base, it's but it, it's you testing, can see how far yeah. it challenged. It's testing the cloud. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so. Yes, it has momentum. Uh, another thing I'm looking at as well is there. This is a this is a reversal like pattern to me. Like it went up, it's going down, and it's it's going to go back up, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it should. Yeah. So all these all these things combined to me is something to try out. That's why I bought into it. Yeah. So I, I went ahead and pulled the trigger. But again, I'm only using a very small percentage of my portfolio to do this. This isn't I'm not putting it all on this. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I'm still this is still in the in the experimental phases. So mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and eventually I'll identify like my no go criteria as well. Like let's say this this indice right here, if the green's not above the red, that's a no go. End of story. And as I've been going through the screener, like I'll pop up a different company like i don't know what's that one you were looking at the the ltd or the, oh, v, that one uh, v, vgr vgr so yeah. so let's say i for some reason i would never buy ltd like i'd be mad if i did but <laughs> uh vgr yeah so vgr here um vector group so ltd is a no-go for me i just walk away right there but so here it is all right so right here like uh red's above the green uh that's not a good sign to me it's at 30 that means it has a strong momentum of downward it's below zero which is also a negative um it's also a negative uh momentum indicator uh let's see vgr here so right now i'm two two of two in the negative All right, so the orange is above the blue. That's negative. Um, the RSI is undersold. So RSI looks like some but, soon potential. But undersold, undersold is good on RSI. Undersold is good. Yeah. Um, so that's when I'll go back and, and I'll kind of see how off, this. It's bouncing off the floor on the stochastic. So it should be coming back up undersold you know and it looks about like in in the past it looks about right here so it looks like it's going to drop down a little bit more before it decides to reverse if it makes sense yeah so i i'm and then you know these right here um negative so right now i have one not quite there yet one um I would say it's like just real choppy like it's down I would say like maybe when it gets to about, about right here in the middle would probably be there so this one's not right quite good this one's not right ready this one's showing no until that blue at least crosses the orange right yeah. so these three are still showing some still negative momentum the other two are still showing negative momentum so i would say um if you might make a note of this in your own toolbox here but 
I would say you still have. I would say like at least two, three weeks before it starts to actually change direction. Mm. Yeah, you might be right. You know, I mean, you know how it is. Though. You get to the point where I haven't bought anything in two weeks, and it's like I'm just getting itchy. You know, like I, I, I gotta, I want to buy something. You know. Yeah, I, it's just but you I, know, if you, I mean, your stop is like negative one thousand. So I don't think you're gonna get stopped out. Yeah, I mean, shit, yeah. the company would have to go under to get stopped out at this point. Yeah, but and I, don't, I mean, I'd probably, it did revert. I'd probably only make like five percent off of it too. So I'd risk. I'd probably risk. I just think if you, it, I, I have a strong feeling that if you bought into this, if I bought into this right now, I'd be holding this thing for months. Oh yeah, and regretting that i bought into it because then i would want to use that money to buy into something that's hot right now that's showing strong momentum yeah. but you can see for yourself the difference between netflix and this one i mean it's it's obvious of the what the indicators are showing yeah um uh, so am i right i don't know yeah. am i wrong i don't know, I don't know. it's, all, it's yeah. all experiment who knows right it's all about risk to reward you know and, and i think you're right like i think will vgr go up i think it it will depends on what it does tomorrow but i think there's probably more of a risk that it goes down you know so. yeah but you're gonna buy into it tomorrow right <laughs> oh i've been doing something different than the market orders i'm using the uh the intraday and using the uh the 15 minute um, the five so it's intraday week you know five day period 15 minute intervals okay uh, and I'm looking just analyzing the chart finding you know a nice spot to buy and then that's what I'm doing is it uh has it have you tested it is it working out no I haven't tested it yet but that's what I've determined oh, okay I'm, I'm, that's like my new entry strategy because you know in the past I just market by everything in fucking see how it goes but i, I think it, i personally think it's fun it's like trading to trade exactly it's kind of fun yeah it, it is better i think because i am happy when i because there's been times that i've market bought and got a good price and i definitely feel a lot better about those stocks than ones that I, oh yeah that i buy that i overbought or overpaid for when i bought it have to wait a week for it to come back and it's like all right well, yeah. You know, okay. Now we're making. Hey, there's nothing. There's not a better feeling to when you buy into something and then you look at it that day and it's green. Yeah. Exactly. You're like, Hell yeah. 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 But it, typically, if you do a market order, it's 99%. Like I would say, not 99, but like 80% chance it's going to be red. Like yeah. only by a little bit, yeah. but it's always it, it always ends up being kind of red. And to be honest with you, so. Yeah, that's true. But. All right, well, I guess it'll do it for today. We'll uh, do another one soon. See you, everybody. Yeah, let's... Uh, let's